Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit subscribe and the notification bell before you go any further and realize how fucking terrible this content is. And if this is not your first time on the channel, you are a bit of a glutton for punishment. Whichever one of those categories you fall into, thank you very much for being here. I do genuinely appreciate it. Now for today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new archetype that we saw drop in Ancient Guardians, Ursarctic. The Sarctic is that weird deck that does all the crazy synchro summoning without it being actually a synchro and all of that weird stuff. I'll explain a little bit more as we get into the detail, but it goes without saying that the summoning mechanics and the potential of this deck is actually quite interesting. Now, for the most part, we're probably going to end up saying it's going to go into that rogue category at best, but it's definitely a fun deck to play with and definitely something you should be looking to try out. So the aim of today's video is to give you an idea of how to play the deck. You're certainly not going to walk away from this as an expert, and if you do, well, then that's impressive, and I'm highly surprised. But hopefully you'll walk away with at least a grasp of the basics that you can go out into the real world and play the deck. Or, you know, go on to Nexus and just womp bad kids. Now, if you are watching today's video and you're feeling inspired and you'd like to go out and pick up some Yu-Gi-Oh! singles, maybe even some Pokemon ones for that matter, you should check out the channel sponsors, Jam Jam Cards UK. There will be a link down in the description to their eBay store. And if you go ahead and use that, you'll get yourself a cheeky discount courtesy of yours truly. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck in to the video. The Osarctic archetype was released into the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG in Ancient Guardians in May 2021, the second worst year of all time after the prequel 2020. In the OCG, this deck is referred to as Berkti. The archetype is inspired by a large asterism known as the Big Dipper. That's for those of you in the US and Canada, or the Plough in the UK and Ireland, and then some other names depending where else in the world you're from. It's made up of seven stars. This is part of the Ursa Major constellation in the northern sky, which is commonly referred to as the Great Bear. Throughout the archetype's name, appearance, stats, and the like, you'll see nods to this information throughout, such as monsters having 700 attack or defense, but I'm going to stop with the astronomy lesson here and get the focus back onto the children's card game. The deck is made up of Water Beast and Beast Warrior monsters which resemble some sort of bear-like robots, the beasts looking more like actual beasts and the beast warriors looking much more humanoid in appearance. The synchros, with the exception of Polari, all have main deck counterparts that they bear, pun intended, resemblance to. The deck is based around synchro monsters, but you don't actually synchro summon. Instead, they are special summon from the extra deck by counting the difference between the levels of the materials. This effect seems to be inspired, or it is coincidentally similar, to a summoning mechanic we saw known as Dark Synchro Summoning, which has been seen in both the anime and some of the Yu-Gi-Oh! video games, and is used to summon Dark Synchro Monsters, not to be confused with Dark Attribute Synchro Monsters. The main deck monsters we have released are made up of level 7 beast non-tuner monsters and level 8 beast warrior tuner monsters that all have a common quick effect which lets them tribute another level 7 or higher monster in your hand to special summon them, but you get locked into being able to special summon only monsters that have a level for the rest of the turn. The monsters also have effects that activate when they're special summoned, either generating advantage or lines of play intending to deal with your opponent's cards. These effects act as a disruption due to their summoning mechanic from their hand being a quick effect. The deck has a focus on getting out Polari onto the field ASAP. So any combination which quickly gets two monsters onto the field that can be used to make it, a tuner and a non-tuner, such as lefty and righty driver, or the silly combo of Draconet and Galaxy Serpent we saw abused in the older Dragonlink strategies, are good to go. So far it looks like we haven't received all of the intended support for the deck at the time of recording, so largely this is being played in combination with other decks, mostly as an engine of sorts, however this will likely change over time. For this next part, we'll be running down the Orsarctic cards. I'll be reading the effects in a somewhat shortened manner to save some time, but the cards will be shown on the screen for your perusal, not the Yu-Gi-Oh! players know how to fucking read. Now, as discussed earlier, all the main deck monsters share the following effect. During the main phase, quick effect, you contribute one other level 7 or higher monster from your hand, special summon this card from your hand, also you cannot special summon for the rest of this turn, except for monsters with a level. Now I am not going to be repeating this every fucking time, so please keep this in mind. So we start off with Mick Billis. So if it's special summon, you can special summon one Arsarctic monster from your hand, except another copy of Mick Billis. 
Each effect is a hard once per turn. We also have Mick Polar. If it's special summoned, you can add an Osarctic monster from your hand to your deck, except another copy of Mick Polar. Each effect is a hard once per turn. Mick Tarnus. If it's special summoned, you can add an Osarctic monster from your graveyard to your hand, except for another copy of Mick Tarnus. Each effect is a hard once per turn. Mega Billis. If it's special summon while you control another Osarctic monster, you can banish a card from your opponent's graveyard. Each effect is a hard once per turn. Mega Polar. If it's special summon while you control another Osarctic monster, you can pop a spell or trap your opponent controls. Each effect is a hard once per turn. Mega Tarnus. If it's special summon while you control another Osarctic monster, you can Book of Moon one of your opponent's monsters. Each effect is a hard once per turn. Then following on from that, we've got the extra deck monsters. Firstly, we have Polari. It can't be synchro summoned. It must be special summoned from the extra deck by sending two monsters you control with a level difference of one to the graveyard, and there has to be a tuner and a non-tuner. If it's special summoned, you can activate one big dipper directly from your deck. You can tribute a level seven or higher monster to add to your hand, or special summon one or Sarctic monster from your graveyard. Each effect is a hard ones per turn. Septentrion. It can't be synchro summoned. It must be special summoned from your extra deck by sending two monsters with a level difference of seven to the graveyard. One level eight or higher tuner and one non-tuner synchro monster. Negate the effects of all face-up monsters without a level that was special summoned from the extra deck. If your opponent special summons a monster or monsters except during the damage step, you can add an Osarctic card from your deck to your hand. This effect is a hard ones per turn. Grand Chariot. Can't be synchro summoned, must be special summoned by sending two monsters you control with the level difference of seven to the graveyard. That's one level eight or higher tuner and one non-tuner synchro monster. If it's special summoned, you can pop up to two other cards on the field. Once per turn when a card or effect is activated that targets an Osarctic card you control, quick effect you contribute a monster from your hand or field to negate the activation. And then following on from that, we have the spell and trap support. So we start off with Big Dipper. Once per turn, if your Osarctic monster would tribute a monster to activate its effect, you can banish a level 7 or higher Osarctic monster from your graveyard instead. Each time a monster or monsters are special summoned, place a counter on this card. Once per turn, if a monster or monsters are special summoned and an Osarctic synchro monster is on the field, you can remove the counters minimum 7 to take control of the opponent's monster. Osarctic Departure. Discard a card and add two Osarctic monsters from your deck to your hand. If you tribute a monster to activate an Osarctic monster's effect except the turn this was sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from the graveyard instead. Each effect is a hard once per turn. Osarctic Slider. Special summon one of your Osarctic monsters that is banished or in your graveyard, but it can't attack and is destroyed during the end phase. For the rest of the turn after this card resolves, you can't special summon except for monsters with a level. You can only activate one copy of Slider per turn. Osarctic Quint Charge. Once per turn, you can pay 700 life points to activate one of the following effects. You can add an Osarctic monster from your graveyard to your hand, or you can tribute two Osarctic monsters, even if face down, to special summon an Osarctic monster with a level equal to the difference from your extra deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. When your Osarctic Synchro monster is destroyed by an opponent's attack, you can activate this effect. Your opponent must shuffle cards into the deck so that the total number of cards on their field, hand and graveyard is 7. For this next part, we'll be taking a look at some indirect support the deck can employ. The viability of these is not something I'm diving into too deep, but it may give you some ideas of what you could consider running. And as always with these videos, this list won't be exhaustive. Generic Beast and Beast Warrior support. Now the list here is potentially huge, but one of the most prominent ones you could consider that is definitely meta relevant is Alpha the Master of Beasts which does tick many of the boxes that would be desirable for indirect support cards. Watery Boys. Whether it's Moulin Glacier, Deep Sea, Diva, Atlanteans, or any of the other great options to consider, there's plenty of synergy with the other water attribute focused cards. And this isn't limited to just monsters, there's even plenty of spell and trap support that you can employ. Deep Drawing. If consistency is what you want, then there's a handful of great options that you can definitely give some consideration to. But the two that I think are definitely worth name dropping are Trade-In and Sacred Sword of Seven Stars. In fact, the Sacred Sword of Seven Stars, if you look in the artwork, even has the Big Dipper in it. Now, both of these would work smoothly in this deck. Lefty Lucy, Righty Tighty. 
These drivers are much less bricky than the kind of one that we're used to discussing. These are a one-stop Polari shop, and definitely seems like they could be a fantastic option to make use of. And for the final part of this video, we're discussing some sample deck lists. Now it's well worth noting that these aren't super tried and tested. The intention is just to give you some ideas of strategies you could consider, as well as options worth taking a look at. Now as a quick note before we get stuck in, remember that if you are feeling particularly inspired by today's video and want to nab some singles on the cheap, check out the eBay link in the description for the channel sponsors Jam Jam Cards UK and you will get yourself a nice discount on their eBay store. And that fellow do list is all for today's video. By virtue of the fact that you made it this far into the video, hopefully you've enjoyed it enough to have hit subscribe and the notification bell, or at least hate it enough that you couldn't possibly look away. Regardless of which one of those you fall into, thank you very much for being here and making it this far. I do genuinely appreciate it. Now, whilst I've got your attention, it is worth noting that this isn't the only kind of content we do on the channel. We do deck profiles, combo tutorials, more how to play videos, we do locals vlogs, we do event vlogs, we do discussion content, anything you could genuinely want from your absolute favourite YouTubers. Now if there is something that you'd like to see on the channel, or maybe something that you think that I've missed out, definitely let me know down in the comments or go ahead and find me on social media, there are links to all my social media channels in the description. But anyway that's enough waffling on from me, thank you very much for being here and I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.